Hello everyone, welcome to Next Race. Today we will discuss the topic of basic characterization of a carbon based nanomaterial, commonly known as carbon quantum dots. For those who don't have a basic idea about carbon quantum dots, they are typically uh, small nanometric uh, materials having a diameter of 10 nanometers. They are often spherical or quasi spherical in shape. Carbon quantum dots exhibit strong light absorption and high photoluminescence properties. They can absorb light in the ultraviolet and visual regions and emit fluorescence in the visible spectrum. The emission color can be tuned by controlling the size, surface chemistry and doping of the carbon quantum dots. Due to various excellent properties, they have been renowned in various applications in the field of chemical science and nanotechnology. Here in this slide you can see a list of applications for carbon quantum dots. So what are the basic characterization that a researcher has to perform in carbon quantum dot research? Firstly, one has to measure the UV spectra using a UVV spectrophotometer. Generally, the UV spectra of carbon quantum dot consists of two humps near the UV region. Here you can see in the graph, the one at the lower wavelength region is mainly due to pi pi stars transition, which uh, is occurred due to C double bond C systems and other at the higher wavelength region is mainly due to non-bonding pi star electron transition which could be due to carbonyl based systems. This is a characterization for optical properties now coming to a chemical characterization that is FDIR. In FDIR you could expect to see a huge hump near 3500 wave numbers this is due to OH bond stretching. Other than this you can expect to see peaks of carbonyl, OH bond stretching, etc. And remember, if we have doped or functionalized the quantum dots with the sulfur or nitrogen, you can expect to get additional peaks like uh, that of uh, CN bonds, NH2, etc. Before carrying out all this test, if you are aiming to create a carbon quantum dot with high fluorescence, you must see it under a UV cabinet at standard 365 nanometer light source, if it has the sufficient fluorescence or not. Here you can see what one could expect to see a fluorescence of a carbon quantum dot to look like under 360 nanometer excitation. You can clearly see the green light which is being emitted on exciting at 365 nanometer wavelength. Then using a spectrophotometer, you have to measure the maximum emission intensity for excitation at which wavelength. Coming to X-ray diffraction, you can expect to see a broad peak at 2 theta value near 25 degrees. This originates mainly due to partial graphite cores of the carbon quantum dots. This is not in for high characterization. You have to perform XPS, Raman spectra, NMR, time decay, and quantum mill studies in a photoluminescence measuring instrument. For microscopy, you have to take help of transmission electron microscope. But these are all the higher characterization. First, you have to perform the basic characterization that I have mentioned in the slides before. These are some of the sources that I have taken my help from in preparing the slides. You can go through them. I will soon update you uh, about synthesis of defined colored uh, carbon quantum dots. If you want to learn more, you can uh, go to Google Scholar and learn more about carbon quantum dots. Thank you everyone.